Hey gang, uh, thanks for watching. The videos are starting to get some traction. So uh, I'm gonna, before we start, make a quick plea for uh, uh, hitting the subscribe button. Um, it does help us. It helps the videos. It helps us find our audience. And um, you know, a little positive feedback loop. We'll keep making them, keep commenting, get involved, and we'll talk. Um, hope you enjoy the show. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Welcome back, friends. I got a little bit of a cold, so you have to kind of uh, bear with me through my uh, through my gravelly voice. So the time has come to uh, start sinking your money into some effects for the Jerry Rig. The obvious contender, the first thing on everybody's mind is the Mutron, right? Easy. Sounds just like Jerry. Plug and play. My hot take for a Friday afternoon at the end of October, go Phillies, uh, is the best place to start is the MXR Phase 100. Um, I think Jerry used it on, there's more dead songs that it gets use. Uh, it's got quite a bit of versatility, and, uh, and it's just a fantastic sounding phase pedal. Um, a little underappreciated, I feel like, in the in the vintage market. It wasn't really used by a ton of um, different artists. The Phase 90 is much more ubiquitous and I think has made it onto bigger records. You know, Eruption, obviously, and um, all over the Floyd, right? But the Phase 100 kind of is the, is the quiet, bigger brother. Um, there was a really great uh, reverb video that they, they used to do this thing called Potent Pairings. Um, where they would sort of show you how to use pedals and like, you know, from from iconic recordings. And I was really surprised how, how often it showed up on like some Stone stuff and some Zeppelin stuff. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's a cool pedal. It's a really cool sounding phase. It's very unique. It's much, the effect is much stronger um, than a phase 90. Phase 90s are on a ton of pedal boards and you hear it all over the, all over the place. Uh, but the phase 100 is a little more unique. And I, and I, I when, when, and after I got mine, um, it's my favorite place on the pedal board. I mean, in, t in terms of in terms of Jerry uh, Garcia effects, it's my favorite place to go. I, I think it's um, it it's a really like unique sound, and it and it's Jerry all day long too. The the um, the great King College CD that they put out, the sh they open up the show with uh, with Sugary, and uh, you know. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it's just, uh, it just, it just sounds like the big guy right out of the box. Now, this one is a vintage script logo um, uh, Phase One Hundred that I've had for a number of years. I, I found it um, at, at like a music store website uh, probably about a decade ago and snatched it up because uh, you never really see them uh, come up for sale. I had a reissue. I had the block logo reissue and it didn't, it didn't really sound great. And I also was sort of not, didn't really know what I was doing. My ear hadn't really developed to pick out the, the um, the sound and it's all over the place. They, the, uh, the, the dead modified it. Um, the road guys modified it so that he had, had the speed knob on a, uh, on a foot switch later on. Cause he would use it sped up for candy man. Like you heard at the beginning, but then he would use this like great slow. Um, too, you know, and I mean, it shows up all over the place. It shows up in, um, uh, like a little, you know, you know, you can space out with it. Um, and uh, my other favorite way that, that Garcia employs the Phase 90, and once you hear the sound, you kind of it's you kind of can't unhear it, but it's when he pairs it with the overdrive, and you get the. Let's get rid of that. 
You know, I mean, it's uh, it's the great like go to heaven early Brent Midland songs, but it sticks around and it shows up in a bunch of other places. There's there's the Yeah, it's it's just it's just a great sounding pedal, you know. Um, I think he had good taste, and I think he just like a lot of other things. Like he's not, it, it's not the phase nine. It's not the more common. It's the light, slightly less used, the slightly less popular version. Um, and it and it immediately under 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 the big guy's fingers, it kind of you know it, it he makes it his own. Um, there the. the 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 knobs and controls are a little hard to uh, put together. <laughs> there's there's obviously like one side is speed and then the other side is waveform. Um, and you kind of you know it's like I think what it would what it would look like going through an oscilloscope, I guess. But I don't really know. There's four different choices. I keep it on all the way to the right, which is the the two upright ovals with the line going through it. Um, as opposed to the line staying in the center, which is two notches over. They all sound a little similar, you know, but that that's where I leave it. Um, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you some pictures of the inside of it. It's, it, it, it's just, you know, it's just a cool pedal. If you can find a working script logo one, definitely get it. I, the prices are pretty reasonable. They're not, you know, totally crazy. Um, but uh, it was where I started with vintage pedals. It's the first first vintage pedal I bought, and I'm I'm pretty stoked on it. Still, I still get a thrill out of um, when I turn it on because it's because the, here's the thing: the Phase 100 is like plug and play. You know what I mean? You just tr you turn it on, you put it on that setting, you got the fast and the slow, and it sounds exactly what you're it, like. It's a known quantity, and it, and it sounds exactly like how you're expecting it to sound. Whereas, you know the 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 um, envelope filter it's like that is a deep rabbit hole and uh, there's a lot of little pitfalls um and a lot of you know there's a bunch of different ways to do that one um so we'll we'll do we'll do a proper mutron deep dive uh but i wanted to you know i wanted to make a quick video about about my love my undying love for the phase 100 because it's it is such a cool sound and it's such a cool unique pedal and um it goes so well with this clean platform, that's the other kind of amazing thing that um, is really cool about it. Like it doesn't overwhelm the signal. You can you can start you can still hear. You can still hear this guitar sound. You know you can still hear it's a sparkly it's a sparkly guitar note coming out. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my, that's my, so yeah, that, that's my take on the phase, uh, the phase 100. It's a, it's a super duper cool pedal. Um, and I think if I did my research right, I'm sure I forgot some songs. Definitely, definitely, definitely jump in the comments and let me know where I'm, where I made a mistake. But like, uh, I, I, it's used more. If you're playing the Grateful Dead band, I think you get, you know, and the funds are limited. I think you get more bang out of this because it's used on more songs. If you want, if you want to stick to the to the way Jerry did it, I mean, there's certainly nothing wrong with with, interp with interpreting it in your your own way. But but I love hearing the songs that delivered the same way. You know what I mean? I love hearing it when, when a band comes out and they play it and they treat it right and they play Candyman, you know, with the with the phase on and it's turned up fast. Uh, and you don't clam up any notes like I did. <laughs> uh, it's it's super cool, you know. It's super rewarding. That's kind of what that's that, that's what warms my heart as a deadhead when I go see dead dead bands. Um, yeah, Phase One Hundred, um, maybe a little underappreciated, but uh, but nonetheless uh, a super duper cool cool pedal and like a pretty you know entry good pr pretty good entry spot into vintage pedals if you're into that if, um if you can find an old block logo when i have that that's the one thing i haven't tried is the block the vintage block logo because over at a certain period of time uh mxr changed from the script to the block letters and like that's a whole thing there's a there's a zillion videos 
they're not a zillion. There's a lot of videos about pedal history and stuff like that on YouTube. So I'm not the guy to give you the, the, you know, the deep dive on, on the history of MXR. Um, but you know, you, there's other places to look. It's a cool company. The story's cool. It's, it's worth checking out. It's two, two guys in Rochester, I think, uh, that started making pedals and, and, you know, it, it took off and they, they got their pedals into the, into the rigs that, that like, you know, in the seventies, there weren't really like pedal board. People, people just kind of plugged in, you know, there wasn't like a lot of pedals. So, so these were early ones and, and they got it to people that were, were, were definitely tastemakers in those early days of, of uh, guitar pedal sounds. So like, uh, Dave, you know, David Gilmore, uh, had one in the Floyd and, or, or he had the phase 90, but he had MXR stuff nonetheless. And then of course, Eddie Van Halen, like I said, um, you know, they just got their product because it was so good to the right people. And now, you know, they're huge. They got bought by Dunlop and, uh, it's a huge, huge, well-known company. Uh, and they make great, great stuff. The MXR, uh, delay stuff is great. And, um, the, you know, the, the, uh, the distortion plus we'll do, we'll, we'll talk about that too. At some point, that's the, that's the first, you know, that's the first overdrive pedal I, that, that I can think of Jerry using. Um, and it's, it's just a great sound. Um, yeah. So, um, I'm working on other stuff. I'm working on a, I'm working on a big, long project about Macintosh. It's take, it's taken me in a bunch of different directions. I, I was going to, that was going to be the next thing I posted, but it, it, um, I kind of want to do it right. So I'm trying to like interview some people and get some, get some cool pictures and get some, some like real knowledge about the product. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a couple of connections with, with some knowledgeable folks. So I'm reaching out to them and I'm trying to try to entice them to, uh, maybe let me interview them. I don't know. We'll see. Um, it's a fun project, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm having some changes in my, in my personal life. I'm, I'm going through a divorce. So this has been super duper fun. And I cannot say thanks enough to you guys for watching these things, man. It's so fun to talk about, um, guitar stuff, particularly Grateful Dead guitar stuff. It's really like where my heart is, uh, as a guitar player. I love original music. You know, I got, you know, I record stuff at home. I, I, I write songs, but, uh, I kind of always go back to the dead. It really is like fortifies me on a, on a pretty deep, um, you know, it fortifies my soul kind of musically. Um, and it's just f super fun to talk about the, um, the gear and, you know, the guys that have commented and reached out and emailed me and stuff like it's awesome. I'm, I'm so thrilled to hear from everybody. So, um, you know, if this speaks to you, hit the subscribe button. Um, it's, it's great to see, to see that, that, uh, my efforts are, are meeting with the tiny, the tiniest amount of success. So, so, um, so yeah, um, stay tuned and we'll keep going. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, right? It's, uh, it's sort of endlessly fascinating. I'm endlessly fascinated by it anyway. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, have a great weekend, keep playing and, and we'll talk real soon. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.